Hello and welcome to this Dr. Frost Maths video on Key Stage 5, Integrating Using Partial Fractions. Now we're going to use this method of integration whenever the fraction that we have can be decomposed into partial fractions. And we know we can decompose into partial fractions if the denominator of the fraction can be written as a product. So in this particular case, we can see we have a product here, and with this expression here in the denominator, that could be written as a product of x plus 1 and x minus 1, because that's the difference of two squares. So always try and spot when the denominator of a fraction that you're integrating can be written as a product. And as long as you know how to decompose into partial fractions, then it's not a particularly difficult method of integration. So we've got the integral of 2 over x squared minus 1. And as per my advice, we initially want to write this as a product of expression. So that's the difference of two squares. It's x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now, as per the title, we want to decompose this into partial fractions because then each of those partial fractions will be easier to integrate than what we have here. So let's separately do that. We've got 2 over x plus 1, x minus 1, and that can be written as some constant over the first thing in the denominator plus b over the second thing in the denominator. And then, as we saw in that partial fractions video, we can multiply both sides by x plus 1 and x minus 1. So, if we multiply by that, on the left-hand side we just have 2. If we multiply this by x plus 1 and x minus 1, multiplying by x plus 1 gets rid of that. And then we still need to multiply by x minus 1, so that becomes a x minus 1. And then this is going to similarly become b x plus 1. And then do you remember that you substitute in suitable values of x, which gets rid of some of these terms. So if we were to sub in x as 1, that would be 1 minus 1, 0, so that would wipe out this term. So if x is 1, we still have 2 on the left-hand side. That term gets wiped out because that's 0. And we have b times 1 plus 1, so that's 2b, giving b is 1. And similarly, if we subbed in x as minus 1, that's going to get rid of this term. So we get 2 is equal to minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2a, and that term gets wiped out because minus 1 plus 1 is 0, and that gives us a is minus 1. So now I can turn this integration into the integral of this thing instead. So let's put the positive thing first. We've got the integral of 1 over x minus 1, and then the a is minus 1, so we've got minus 1 over x plus 1, and now we're integrating this simpler expression here. Now remember, when we integrate 1 over x, we get ln of x. So if we're integrating 1 over x minus 1, we get ln of x minus 1. And we have to be slightly careful. If there was a number in front of this x, we would have to divide by that number. But that's just 1, so we don't need to do anything there. And then we've got minus, and this is going to be ln of x plus 1 and obviously with the plus c. And if we wanted to, because we got log of something minus log of something, we can use laws of logs to combine that into a single log like so. Let's do this second one. We've got the integral of 8x squared minus 19x plus 1 over 2x plus 1 times x minus 2 squared. Now this expression here can be written as a over the first thing in the denominator. Now, do you remember when we have a squared factor in the denominator, we have to have b over this without the squared. And then we also have another fraction, but with the squared. If you can't remember how to do that, I advise you go back to the partial fraction video or your textbook. And then let's multiply both sides of this equation by 2x plus 1 and x minus 2 squared. So we're going to get at the top here just 8x squared minus 19x plus 1. And then we're going to multiply all of these by the whole of that denominator. So we multiply that by the 2x plus 1 first to get rid of that, but we still times by the x minus 2 squared. Then similarly, this b is going to become x minus 2, 2x plus 1. And then we've got a third term of c, 2x plus 1. So let's substitute in some suitable values of x. If x was 2, that would get rid of this term. So subbing in 2 into this, if I use my calculator, is minus 5. Now, subbing in 2 into this gets rid of that term, and it gets rid of that term. 
leaving this term here. So we have 2 times 2 plus 1, that's 5c, so c is minus 1. If we substitute in x is equal to minus half, because that will get rid of this term here. Now the left-hand side, if I do minus 0.5 equals, I can now use my answer key. So 8 answer squared minus 19 answer plus 1 gives me 25 over 2. If I substitute in minus half into here, I get minus 2.5 squared, which is minus 25 over 4a. And both these terms will zero out, and that gives me a is equal to minus 2. And then finally, we've run out of values to sub in that will zero out stuff, but it doesn't matter. We can just sub in any arbitrary value of x, or we can compare coefficients as well. But subbing 0 into this gives you just 1. If we sub in 0 into this, we get 4a. If we sub in 0 into this, we get minus 2 times 1, which is minus 2, so we get minus 2b, and subbing 0 into this gives us plus c. Now we know what c and a are, so we get 1 is equal to minus 8, minus 2b, and then plus the c, which is minus 1, and that gives us a value of b of minus 5. So now we're integrating this, which is the integral of this, and that is minus 2 over 2x plus 1, plus the b, which is minus 5, so minus 5 over x minus 2, and plus the c over this, so, so minus 1 over x minus 2 squared. In fact, I'm going to write this as minus 1 x minus 2 to the minus 2, because it's going to be integrated in a slightly different way. And let's integrate each of these terms. Now, initially, if we were to integrate 1 over 2x plus 1, that would be ln of 2x plus 1. But do you remember that because of the reverse train rule, we have to divide by the number in front of the x. So if we divide by the 2, that minus 2 here just becomes minus 1. So we have minus ln 2x plus 1. And then this is just going to be minus 5 ln x minus 2. We don't need to divide by anything because there's no number in front of the x. And this is slightly different. This is not a linear one because we have a power on this bracket here. Do you remember we just add 1 to the power, so that becomes x minus 2 to the minus 1. We divide by that new power, so we divide by the minus 1, so that becomes plus 1. And we also divide by whatever number is in front of the x because of the reverse chain rule, but that's just 1, so it stays like that. And let's not forget the plus c. Now with this final question here, we have a top heavy fraction because the power of the top polynomial here is at least equal to the power at the bottom. You can see here the highest power of any x term is 2, whereas the highest power of any x term here is 1. So we say that's top heavy because 2 is at least equal to 1. And the way we deal with that is to first basically do algebraic division to turn this into a non-top heavy fraction. So we need to do x squared divided by x plus 1. And if you don't know how to do algebraic long division, then I recommend you view my video on that first. Let's fill in any missing terms. Here we've got a plus 0 x here, and we've got a plus 0. So let's do x into x squared, that's just x. And then we do x times x plus 1, which is x squared plus x. Then do you remember that we subtract this, so that minus that disappears. 0 minus 1 is minus 1x. Carry down the plus 0, and then repeat. So x into minus 1x is minus 1, and then we do minus 1 times x plus 1, which is minus 1x minus 1. Do the subtraction again, and 0 minus minus 1 is 1. So that means that the integral of x squared over x plus 1 can be rewritten as the integral of, well, remember we take our quotient first, this is the quotient here, so that's x minus 1, and then we have this remainder here of 1 over what we were originally dividing by. So I haven't done any integration here yet, I've just rewritten this as its quotient and the remainder over the thing you were dividing by. So now this is much easier to integrate, we've got to integrate x, which is half x squared, the minus 1 integrates to minus x, and the 1 over x plus 1 just integrates to plus ln of x plus 1. Let's not forget our plus c.